Thank you for being patient with me. All right, come on over here, kids. Take a look at what I brought today. <laughs> yeah, what is this? A train, yeah. I love trains. They're so exciting to watch and things. Here's a nice little boxcar kind of thing. Let's see if we get that on. Can we get them on the track? Yeah, that goes there. Look at that. It rolls right around that way. And this one looks like it'll go over here. Looks fine. Can you get it on the track there? Can you get it on there? There you go. Look at that. Looks pretty good. Now, I think we want to put this one in front. Put that one in front there. I like that one. No. no? That goes back here. Okay. What about this one? This is pretty. Can we put that one up front? No, this one has to go up front. Are you telling me there's an order to this? Yes. Well, which one's supposed to be in first? What's this one? That's the motor. That's the thing that pulls it. So It's called the what? The engineers in there, the, the driver, the motor, the, the engine. So are you telling me that trains are supposed to have the engine up at the front? Yeah. Oh, that would make a difference, wouldn't it? This is a good illustration, boys and girls, of the way our lives would be. I'm going to have you put that on there. See if you can get it all in order. Can you get them on the track? So that one goes first. You know, this is the way trains are designed to work. The engine goes first. And then we have like a coal car, it looks like. We've got a hopper car back here. A wood car, yeah. Oh, it has wood, not coal. <laughs> and the caboose. It doesn't have to be plugged in. You can just make sure it's on the track. Yeah. See what happens if we have a whole bunch of people that think they should be first. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Oh, Lucas, come on over here. Come on over here, buddy. Not right now. Come on over here, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So somebody's supposed to be in charge, is what you're saying. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. If we don't have somebody at the head, like the train, the engine goes at the front, then we're really not going anywhere, are we? This is the same as it is in our lives, boys and girls. You're almost there. You're almost there. If we have in school, we have a teacher who leads all the rest of us, if you will, like the cars behind the engine there. At work, people have bosses, don't they? The bosses kind of one. Even our families, even our families have a head. Our parents are like the head of the family, you know, they got to lead us to get where we're supposed to go. So the engine is the power, right? We said a prayer not too long ago. We said, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Without our engine, we have no power. We're going nowhere. Well, we know who the boss is. We know who our teachers are. We know who our parents are. But what about the church? Who's the engine? Who's the head of our church? Who is it? Who is it? Jesus. Jesus. I'm so glad you boys and girls realize that. He's supposed to be at the front. It's just like this train. Without that power, we're not going anywhere. It's the one that enables us to be what we're supposed to be and take us where we're supposed to go. Jesus is the one who enables us to be what we're supposed to be and to go where we're supposed to go. The Bible tells us. Can you pull it along there? Can you guys make it move? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the head of the church. And look at us. We're supposed to be like this, lined up behind him, connected to our power. <laughs> you did it, boys and girls. Let's pray, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you. You are the head of the body. You are the head of your church. Help us not to be derailed, but to be linked to you, our source of power. Thank you for taking us where we need to go. Amen. 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 It'll help me. And let us remember the church belongs to Jesus, not man. And Jesus paid his church with his blood. And Jesus is the head of the church. I invite you to take a moment of silence.
Let's have an attitude of a prayer. How is our church doing? Do we stand on the firm foundation of Jesus? The life of Jesus and death and resurrection and his second coming? And how are you doing? Do you stand on the firm foundation of the Bible? Our church is now over 160 years old. Are we fully grown up, mature, wise, and fruitful? How long have you been a Christian? Where are you in your faith journey? Are you still the same as years ago? Or still saying me, me, me as a child does? Or are you a mature Christian and are making a disciples of Jesus? Or you are in between? What does God say about you in our church this morning? Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you that church belongs to you, not man. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, God, that Jesus purchased his church with his blood. Thank you, God. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are the head of the church, not the pastors, not the one who gave much offerings, or who is so smart, or who has been in the many, many years in the church. But you are the head of the church, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Take your place, oh God. Take your place. Oh Lord, help us. Lord, we want to be the church that is faithful in sharing the gospel through words and action. And Lord, we want to be a church that is a lighthouse in the community and appointing people toward you, Jesus, that our Savior. And help us, O Lord, individually and as your church to worship you in a spirit and truth. And Lord, help us to the real, the main reason to come to church on Sunday morning is to worship you, to seek your face, and to want to see your glory as Moses did. So Holy Spirit, convict us and transform us and empower us to commit and decide to follow you, Jesus, and to be faithful to your commands, whatever it takes. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus, who promises to come back as the King of glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen.